I don't love this fact, but no matter what kind of expert you are, you could be the top guru, the biggest expert in your industry. But if you're not wearing the right thing, unfortunately, people won't have trust in you. You won't look like the expert. They won't have confidence in you. You won't look confident. It's not exactly my favorite thing to talk about because I, I hate the fact that you go to a great school. You went to a great school. You have a certain amount of experience, but at the same, at the end of the day, someone might judge you for what you're wearing. And that's why we're talking about this today, specifically what to wear on camera, on stage, on Zoom. This could be for a job interview, for meeting with the board. It could be asking for money from investors. It could be a TEDx, it could be a panel, but we have to really talk about these things. I'm going to specifically, I'm going to talk about five tips on how to look good on TV, specifically about what we're wearing. Okay. These are specifically things that you're going to wear. Okay. You're wearing already. Let's talk about colors first. So number one, talk about color. If we, we have to think about what looks good on our skin tone and I'll give you an example. For me, I don't want to go towards wearing too much black. I wouldn't wear a black shirt. Um, I have brown hair. I have brown eyes. I have very white skin. That black has too much contrast. It's too dark. You want to wear colors that kind of it, brighten up your skin tone, make you look really energetic and happy and make you look trustworthy. I, I kind of go towards for my male CEOs, the, the blues, the lavenders, colors that really make your eyes pop. Because at the end of the day, you really want people to focus in on your eyes. And if they are, if they're, if everything's too dark, it's just the light isn't going to be going to the face and make sure that, you know, they're, they're focusing in on the eyes. So think about the colors that really make your eyes and your face look great blues, navies, you know, if you're wearing a suit, try not to be black, dresses, try them, you know, try to back away from black. Bright, bright whites may not be great for you either. So it really depends on your skin tone. But I will say too, it's nice to stick with solids over a really loud pattern because at the end of the day, you really want that focus again to be on your eyes. You want people to be focusing in on your message and connecting with you and connect with you, you know, in with your eyes because that's where people connect the best with you. Okay. Not your lips, not your shirt, not your boobs, not your, you know, ceiling fan, not your shoulders, but they're going to really connect with your eyes. So that should be the focus, especially when you're on Zoom and you're um, having a meeting. Make sure that those eyes are really popping. Okay. Okay. So great, bright, great colors that look great on you and not super loud designs, you know, that kind of thing. The next thing is think about the glasses that you're going to wear on camera. If you have any kind of lighting around you, glasses can end up, you know, you can end up seeing the light in the glasses. So that's a one issue. If you have that issue, you could put contacts in. If you have to wear your glasses, which I get, I'm over 40. I have to wear my glasses if I'm reading off a script, especially, or I have to look at something that, you know, that, uh, that I have to see. Um, make sure that you put your lights maybe on the side of you so you don't see the light, you know, with one of those ring lights, it's going to actually, you're going to see the light in your glasses lenses. So think about your glasses. Also think about how large your frames are. If they're too small, they might cut off some of your pupil. So you want your glasses frames to be big enough so your eyes are really noticeable, that they can really focus in on your eyes and that your eyes aren't blocked. Really important. So those are two things. The third thing is think about your shoes and socks, especially for men. If you are on a panel and your, you know, your legs are kind of crossed or you're crossing them at your, at your knee, you know, we see your sock. So make sure you're proud of those socks. If you have a statement sock, that's great. Go with it. But just remember your sock may show. So whatever you're going to do, just make sure you're proud of whatever sock you're wearing. Okay. Uh, women make sure that you have a good shoe that is not old and you can't, you know, the whole sole isn't, um, completely blown out. You want to make sure that it looks really nice. Um, if you do have an older shoe, just don't show it on stage. Don't cross your legs so we can see a worn out bottom of your shoe. Here's why that's important. You're a thought leader. You want to amplify your message. You want to make sure that people trust you. If you don't look like you take care of yourself or you take care of your things, people won't think that they, you can take care of them. 
So that's why all of this is very specific. It's not because you need to look like some model or, you know, like some fashionista, but you just need to look like you take care of yourself because people will know then that you can take care of them or their money or whatever it is that your business does, okay? Uh, you know, you could take care of their business, whatever it is. Uh, let's talk about the fourth thing now, jewelry. Jewelry should just be minimal because again, you want them to focus on your message and remember your message. Another reason jewelry should be minimal and so you don't take away the focus of yourself. They're not you know, thinking about your earrings that are moving around or that, wow, look at all those rings, is you don't want it to make noise. So if you're wearing a lavalier mic because you're on stage and they put a lav mic on you, you want to make sure that it's your necklace isn't large and loud and it's banging up against your microphone. Same thing with if you're, you know, have a a stick mic, you don't want to hear your rings um, hit that. There was a mayor of a major city who's on uh, GMA about a year ago, and she had a bunch of rings on her hand, and they gave her a mug of water. And I'm going to use this on my hand with uh, my wedding ring and show you an example. She had a mug of water, and she was sipping it, because that's people, you know, they give you, you know, a glass of water if you're going to be on television. And her ring kept banging up against the glass. So she was talking about how amazing, you know, the city was doing really well. They're bringing down property taxes. The um, entertainment was great. The hospitality was great. And that was bringing in all this money to the city. But she constantly banged <laughs> her ring on the glass. and. It was very distracting. I was so focused in on hearing that ring bang on her mug of water that I really didn't hear her message for half of that three minute television spot. And what a waste of her time, right? She did not get the return on investment of that television time. So think about how jewelry can be distracting, okay? It's not about you looking in or trendy or you know not looking like you've made it because you have these big diamond earrings or whatever, but can it distract or could it make a bunch of noise and distract your audience? And then the next thing, the fifth thing is like, think about if you're a woman on a panel, think about what you're going to sit on. Are you standing? Are you having a stick mic? Are they going to put a lavalier mic on you? Ask those questions. A lot of the thought leaders, a lot of the CEOs, the VPs I work with, they don't know that when they get booked to be on a panel that they can ask, what are the seating accommodations? You know, what are the seating arrangements going to be? Because if you're going to be on bar stools, for example, you are going to want to make sure that your skirt or your dress is long enough that when you sit up on that bar stool, which is like literally the worst thing that they put women in for, for our outfits. But um, if you sit up there, your dress or skirt is going to be way up in your thigh and literally everyone's going to be just looking up and, and at your hose or your legs and your, your sh shoes and they're going to be looking at your thighs and your knees and your skirt that's way up, you know, in your crotch to be quite honest. So think about wearing pants or long enough dress or skirt to make sure that you're first covered so you feel more confident because if you're constantly pulling down your skirt or dress, you're not going to feel confident. You're not going to sound confident. You're not going to evoke confidence in your audience members. So I just want to protect you in that it's really not about I don't want your thighs to show. I want you to feel more confident when you are presenting on that day or answering questions on a panel. Super important, so think about that. All right, here's a bonus one. So we did five tips there. The bonus is, if you're a woman, think about your undergarments, your underwear, your bra, your outfit. You know, you might spend two, three, four hundred dollars on this great dress for this big, you know, speaking engagement you have. But what if you don't have an updated bra? and everything just doesn't fit right. You can see everything, you know, things just don't look right. Your your outfit that you spent tons of money on, or even not a lot of money, it just won't look great. So just don't forget that step. A lot of people get really busy, they've had a child, they've done something, they've lost or gained weight, and they haven't updated that bra in many years. And it's, and it's very apparent when they get on stage or get it on TV. So take a look at that and make sure you're covered there appropriately. I hope that was helpful. Again, this is a way to make sure that you're amplified in every way of your life.